Hey, g'day guys, it's Adam from Video Show Me How. And in this video, we're gonna get stuck into wiring up a whole bunch of LED rocker switches. Let's get started. This video is part two of this video up the top here. In that one, we really got stuck into the detail of how to wire up a five pin rocker switch. In this one, we are going to get stuck into wiring up a whole bunch of rocker switches in series as you can see here as well as a usb charge port now this is my pillar pod for the jeep jk i did have a video on how to install this you can see that up the top here as well basically it's a nice sort of formed bit of kit there and the idea is that i'll be running a whole bunch of switches on it like you can see i'm keen to have a light bar uh, switch there some extra pillar mounts and i'm going to have my reverse camera on a switch as well as some USB charge ports as well because as you know you can never have too many charging points in your car. So flipping this guy over as you can see there's a whole bunch of different tabs on the bottom here and in this video we're really going to be running through how you can make this nice and tidy, how you can daisy chain what together here so that you don't have 4,000 wires coming in the bottom. And the idea is you really only really want to have that sort of positive and negative coming out the bottom away till you realize all your battery earths etc if you can help it. So let's get stuck in. So as you can see from the last video we have five pins here. The top row here these are all our negatives. These are all our earths. So what we're going to be doing is daisy chaining those together. We also then have these guys in the middle. Now these are the 12 volt battery so this is the power in and we can also then daisy chain these together as well as including our usb friend here on the end we also then have our power from our dash because these lights will light up when you turn your headlights on so you can sort of see where the switch is so they'll they'll come on with that to be able to do that we need to wire this bottom guy into our power from our dash so there'll be a daisy chain in that scenario and then lucky last these bottom corners here this is what will be actually powering each of these switches so this is pretty straightforward once you know what's connected to what the next step is really working out how to daisy chain those wires together. So you're gonna need some basic tools to get the job done. I've gone and listed everything we have here in the description below. I went sort of hunting for the cheapest prices for you. So if you need anything, check it out down below. You'll need some wiring, obviously, some auto cable wire. You'll need some connectors, and there's a couple of different versions. I have done a video here on the different types that you can find, so check that out if you like. We need a good set of wire strippers, as well as the ones that will pull away insulation. These are a great tool if you haven't got some, totally recommend it. A little bit of heat for any heat shrink, a knife, and that's about it. It's a matter of grabbing a cable, get your cable strippers or your cable puller aparters. I'm not sure what the technical name is, let me know in the comments below, I'm sure someone will know. Then it's a matter of you wanna pull apart the insulation in one spot and then same again next door so the two different splits in the cable wire just like that then you want to grab your knife and you want to cut that section away so that you're left with exposed wire just like that you want to bend the wire fold them together like this and then push these guys together and there you have your joined wire so rather than that actually being split apart it is one single strand there's no sort of split wires so it's much stronger you then want to grab your little spade bit here and same as before you can just push him in crimp down job done so that's my preferred way of joining these and especially doing daisy chain runs it's just that bit stronger and the fact is you haven't actually cut the connection at all so you're not needing to fight any resistance there if that is a factor Right, so using this method, we then need to apply that to our negatives. So we have a negative here for our USB. So we want to start there and then daisy chain across each of the remainder of the plugs. It's worth noting here as well to make sure the orientation is where you want them. There's nothing worse than doing big runs and then having to twist the cables as you connect them in. So in this case, we want the bottom one to be this way and then all the rest to be this way so that they connect in without sort of putting too much stress on the wire itself. 
So here we go, a bit of a progress update. Negative from the USB across to each of the negatives on the switches. I've got a few to go here. Magic of YouTube means that what's gonna take me 15 minutes is gonna take about two seconds for you. And there we go, all joined, ready to go. Should look something like that. All our negatives all in a row here, nice and joined, and the negative for our USB power switches as well. Just make sure you leave yourself a half decent tail. There's nothing worse than having a really short one and then having to muck around with joiners. So with our earths done, the next step is to move on to the actual power and powering the switches themselves. So, so we're gonna have a power coming in from our battery source to each of these middle posts here and to the USB power and that will complete the circuit for the USB plugs. That will then energize these switches so that they can power each of the different devices. Side note, I only have green wire. Normally I'd use red for positive, but you know. So status update as well. We have the start of our loop. So we just need to loop through to the remaining three. And that will look a little bit like this. So all done. Here's our little tail, don't forget that one. But other than that, we've got our USB plug on this side and our three joiners. So now we have earth and ground coming in from each of the plugs here all the way along. So each of the switches has an earth. Then we also have the main power going into each of these switches. Now, quick note at this point is to make sure that we have an inline fuse going into these plugs. So when you're doing this yourself, just make sure that the load is appropriate for what you're powering here. If you're powering through the switch, which for anything heavier than a couple of amps, I wouldn't recommend. I'd recommend using a relay, but just being aware that your wire and therefore your fuse is the limiting factor on how much you can pass through each of your switches. So the next thing that we are going to do is wire in our dash lights. So that's these bottom tabs here. Only three of them, of course. Uh, nothing for the USB, unfortunately. So uh, same story. We just want to wire three gang for each of those. And there we go. Here is our run for the dash lights for the switches themselves so that once we're powering on the dash lights at, uh, at night time, these will come on with the normal lights. So we can plug those guys in. And there we go, we have our dash light run in as well. So the only ones left we have here are the actual outputs of the switches themselves, the power out in those three tabs. What gets wired to those is the out to each of the actual accessories themselves. In this case, this guy's gonna go to a relay and same story with the work lights. The reverse camera is gonna go straight to it because it uses bugger all power. But other than that, we are pretty well good to go. So we'll give it a quick test. I've got a little 12 volt battery here. And what we'll do is we'll power up the dash light run along the top here, which should illuminate each of the writing on the switches themselves. So we'll just get our earth plugged in. When I say plugged in, I mean shoved in. Then some power and what we should see is the lights turn on. There we go. So you can see that's effectively our dash. You can see there, I'll just turn some of these lights off so you can see a bit better. There we go, so when you turn your dash on, that's what will illuminate on the dash itself so you can see what switches are what in the dark. Now of course, once you have your cabling going out to your load itself, once you flick the switch on, these little lights at the top will illuminate as well. So each of the icons will be nice and lit up indicating that that particular accessory is switched on. And I've just wired in the extra run there for 12 volt power. And as you can see, we've got a little LED indicating we are we've got a full battery, which is nice. And then the idea is once you power on the switch, each of these icons would power up indicating that it's on. So this is what it would look like if the dash lights were switched on. So there you go guys, I hope as always that you found this video helpful. And if you did, please leave me a comment in the section below on what you're using your switches for and what you're gonna be powering them for. Always interested to find out. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a few different ways you can do that. Check it out in the description below. Other than that, if you haven't subscribed, hit the old button here 
that will get you in the know so that you are notified when any of the new videos come out. There's some other content here, as you can see, feel free to have a bit of a watch on anything that is of interest. Otherwise, I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.